Good morning, how are you guys doing today? Um, today I'm showing you how to replace the front brake pads on a BMW uh, 2013 BMW 328i. So this would be the F30 chassis. Um, this started in 2011 I believe and is carried on until current times now. Um, this does not have the I guess I've seen other ones that have the nice fixed uh, like Brembo style brakes. These are just the normal traditional BMW brakes that come on uh, come standard with most of the cars. These are probably the ones you'll see most everywhere. But you won't need too much for this job. You'll just need uh, a flathead screwdriver. You'll need a way to compress the caliper back into the piston and then you'll also need an 8 millimeter uh, allen head socket Look, looks something like this um, that's so you can get the caliper bolts off the ones that are holding the uh, caliper onto the caliper bracket obviously you'll need to jack the car up and um, that the lug nuts are 17 mil or lug studs are 17 millimeter and then you obviously need new brake pads and yours may or may not come with the new wear sensor this is the brake pad wear sensor um, some of them come with them some of them don't sometimes you can get away with just reusing the old one as you can see I got the new brake pads there I went with the Acubono these are my favorite brake pads ever for the European cars, they're on my Mercedes CLS 55 also. Um, I get all my stuff from FCP Euro, check them out, their website, good prices, and they have lifetime warranty. Okay, the first thing you'll need to do is to tackle this here spring right here that's in the front. Um, you have to excuse me, I do suggest turning your wheel to, I'm on the left side of the car, so turn your wheel to the right that way you can get as much leverage and space as you need. Um, leverage on the back caliper bolts and then you'll just have, in general, just have more space to work here. So um, yeah, the first thing we need to do is get the spring off. So uh, you can just use a flathead screwdriver to get this here retaining spring off the front and I'll show you how to do that. So pretty much the spring, it, it needs to go towards the back of the car. And then pretty much it'll just do that. So like I said, here, pry against the rotor, and then it the the spring will just pop out. Um, I guess I suggest be careful that it doesn't fly up into your eyes. It never has for me, but it will come off like so. If you find that it's difficult and it's still not wanting to come off, you can grab a second flathead screwdriver and use it to pry the the top. Uh, use it to stick a excuse me use a small one and stick it right inside here so that you can pry it out of the hole but like I said it usually just comes out just like that and it's good to go okay after you got that front retaining spring off you'll now want to focus your attention on the wear sensor which is this little guy right here um, it goes follow it back up it gets attached into the bracket right here which I've already taken out I uh, just used a uh, flathead screwdriver to pry that out and then also it does it also goes into the bracket right here as well I've, I've already pulled it out as you can see and you'll just follow it back into the box that's over here in the back see that box back there uh, this box just opens up on the side like so you open it up sorry let me open it up for you and then in here you'll notice that there is a connector right here on the right side um, you can just pull this whole entire thing out of this box like so so you have it free and then excuse my camera what you want to do is just pretty much just this is a tab right here you can just push it with your finger and pull them both apart obviously i can't pull them both apart right now because i'm holding the camera on my other hand but yeah you just push on this little tab right here in the end that you see me pushing with my thumb and then just pull the connectors apart 
and then you can go on ahead and uh, come back here and then this wire will just it'll just pull straight out of this uh, brake pad if it's kind of difficult just get a pair of pliers and grab right here and pull it out so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I want to move to the back of the caliper where the caliper bolts will be at uh, I already took the caps off excuse my camera shaking around but right here there's usually these little plastic caps on it that look like like that um, you can just use a flathead screwdriver on them to just pop the caps off like this and use your hands to pull them off there's one there by the bleed screw and then there's another one right there on the bottom you probably can't see them zoomed in pretty close to it right here on the bottom there's another one um, after you get those caps off there those are the two eight millimeter uh, bolts that you need to take out so um, you will notice when you're loosening the bolts up uh, the bolts are actually loosening this here bolt that's right here um, when you do get them loosened you'll start to see threads right here from the screw it uh, it's pretty easy to uh, it's easy if you can get you know once you've loosened up the screw if you can get your flathead in here and pry pry the screw that way a little bit trust me you're not going to damage it at all um, just pry it this way um, that enables you to get the caliper off a little bit easier okay once you've got the two caliper bolts loose you can go on ahead and just remove the brake caliper like so um, now is a good now is a good time to get your um, piston compression tool since you can just leave this here pad in here and then you can uh, compress it so I'm gonna go ahead and set this up here and go grab my uh, tool okay as you can see I got my compression tool in here set up like so pretty much just gonna turn this until I get the piston all the way back into the caliper now I would like to know that um, sometimes now I've done brakes a lot and on occasion sometimes when you're compressing these back in the um, the, the brake master cylinder or the fluid reservoir for the brake master cylinder may become overflowed in which case you need to put a drain pan or something under the car to catch it because it's going to fall down compress this back in you can go ahead and just pull on the side pull on this pad right here and it'll just come right out then you can just I, I just I just hang the caliper um, by the uh, spring up top and just just leave it up there then you can go ahead and pull out the other pad here just like so and then go ahead and grab your new pads and slide them into place okay the front the front pad you're gonna need to slide just take it and slide it right back to where it was at right like so and then the, the rear pad you need to actually take see it has springs on it here you need to take it and push it back into the caliper um, so that way you can just slide everything back on together so make sure you have it going the right direction and then you go ahead and push this right back into the uh, caliper just like so then you go on ahead and reinstall the caliper back into position you may you may find that you need to push the the caliper bolts you need to push them out so that you can have room to put the slide this back into place and then right when you got them back into place you can go on ahead and retighten up the eight millimeter socket bolts and, uh, that are holding the caliper on make sure you reinstall the plastic caps that cover the bolts in the back then we can go on ahead and reinstall this front retaining spring um, and you may need to find that you use a maybe a pair of pliers or a flathead screwdriver to install this um, most every time I install these I just do it by hand I first stick on this bottom piece here slides right onto the bottom it rests it's supposed to rest against here and then I kind of just work this one into the hole here like like so just like how you see it like this and then then I work over the top one into the hole 
while while also trying to I kind of I kind of put my finger right here get this one on the top first I know it's kind of hard to see in the camera but you can completely do this by hand just like this kind of just push them into place how they go uh, it's pretty easy you just start by getting these two bottom ones into the holes first or excuse me to bottom one goes into the hole this one kind of rests right here and then you then you kind of like do this kind of motion it'll come together like this at first it'll be crooked then it'll move straight when you put it in a place so now it's time to install the wear sensor um, you'll see it has a the rounded edge here with a piece of metal in it um, what you want to do is take that and push it into the pad in the back here I'll show you on the old pad see the old pad here this right here little circles where the wear sensor goes I have the old wear sensor here I don't know if you can see this on the camera but you pretty much take it now you'll notice the wear sensor has a big has a notch on one end or a thicker side the thicker side will go towards the pad on the pad side the flat side over here will go facing the back of the pad so pretty much you just take it and just stick it straight back into the hole just like that it's just as simple as that you don't have to do anything else you just take it push it right into the back of the new pad which is what I'm gonna do and then you're going ahead and reconnect the connector back up into the black plastic box that's attached to the body so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get everything back to where it goes okay so I got that back on when you go into the car you want to go inside don't start it don't hold your foot on the brake just press the uh, the start button twice so all the lights come on the dash and then just depress actually you don't even need to do that you can just go inside and pump up the pedal to make sure it gets firm that way these are, are back to where they're supposed to be and the fluid level will drop in the brake master cylinder reservoir um, then obviously just go ahead and repeat that for the other side and and you'll be done um, I apologize if my camera was a little shaky but nonetheless uh, that's pretty much how you do it on these cars they're very easy BMW's brakes have been this way for many years since oh, I don't know since I was working on them uh, I worked on pretty old BMW's back in the 80s so um, yeah they really haven't changed much it's pretty much the same so I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Uh, if this is your first time to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I hope that you will uh, hit the subscribe button on your way out and stick around because I do upload videos every week. If you guys want to see anything specific, uh, just send me a message or comment on anything. I do respond to people um, a lot. You know, I try to stay on top of that because uh, Obviously, you guys have questions, and I uh, will try my best to answer them. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.